What the hell is this? You want to divorce me, honey? That's not exactly the case, to be honest. Then why? I'm going to remarry my younger brother's widowed wife. Huh? That's my mission, see? Trouble Busters! No, no, hold on. What are you talking about? Your mission is to make me happy, right? It used to be that way, yes. Used to be? Yeah. You know how my younger brother passed away two months ago, right? That was when it happened. Sharon came into my heart. Huh? By that, you mean that you've fallen in love with Sharon? Not really, but I do think I should ought to marry her. That's what I thought. That's what I thought? Shut the frick up! Because Sharon is in serious trouble, you know? She's become a single mother at the age of 30, and she's working hard. That stupid Ryan. He didn't apply for any life insurance, and they didn't have many savings. And both of Sharon's parents have passed away. She and her child have no one to rely on. Someone has to protect them both. But it doesn't have to be you! Miss Sharon is still young, and there will be opportunities for her remarrying in the future. That's why it would be best if I, as Ryan's older brother, were to remarry her and be together with her. The hell you mean, would be best? What are you gonna do with me, eh? Got any good ideas? I do feel terrible having to divorce you, but... but this is a mission. After that, I tried my darndest to persuade him many times to change his mind, but Clifford only ever shook his head. This is exactly what Sharon wants, Helen. Is what he adamantly claimed. I asked Sharon herself if that was true, but she flatly said, with Mr. Clifford, Miss Helen? Absolutely impossible! Yep, she refused brutally. However, my husband would not give up, so my parents, Clifford's parents, and Sharon herself all sat around a table and had discussion. Just being asked for a divorce is damn unpleasant, but my husband's acting as though he were saying, I'm a nice guy, also boils my blood. Unforgivable. Troublebusters initiate. In any case, I will not marry you, Mr. Clifford! As what she herself has told me, but this codfish just doesn't listen to me at all. Understand, Clifford? This is the reality. It's only been about two months since my husband passed away too, you know? All things considered, it's still too early. I, I suppose that's right. I thought so. So then it shouldn't be early? Can it be done in, let's say, a year or so? You bastard! Who are you negotiating in front of? You are Helen's husband, are you not? I don't understand how unreasonable, how unpleasant it is to claim your wishes to divorce and remarry in front of your wife! Mrs. Thompson, I do feel genuinely sorry, but Helen will be fine. What? Indeed! She's a housewife now, but she's a powerful woman. Her parents are still alive and well, and she can do whatever she wants to as a career. I can guarantee it. What? what? The hell is that bullshit? Does that mean I'm replacing Miss Helen? You bastard! Sharon, please, I... Don't you dare come any closer! You're, You're talking, talking excuses, excuses to the wrong person, person bucko! We're, We're so, so sorry. sorry! Sharon will also have a stable financial situation, and my younger brother will be able to rest with peace of mind. The hell do you mean kind? I... I... What should I do? Son, if this continues, you'll truly be alone! What the... Why are you on their side, Mom? Uh, Dad? And now look at this! Everyone is accusing me, and thanks to something called peer pressure, even Sharon herself is acting against me! It's not peer pressure! It's of my own will to decline you as a husband. I realize this while we live together, but you're just too inconsiderate. I am considerate! That's why I'm offering you and Trevor- I don't need the compassion and self-sacrifice that comes from such people. I'm a single mother, and I need money, of course. Right? So if you marry me, I'll give you that money! It's so lame to try to win a woman's feelings over with money! I'm sorry for the comparison, but Ryan would never, ever do such a thing! If I really think Trevor needs a good father, I'll find someone else! Why? There's a good father right here! I reject you! What the hell? What is with that attitude? Have you forgotten the favors I had given you every now and then? <laughs> so that's where your real intentions lie? Uh, how much? Huh? I'm asking you how much money you gave Sharon! You're so goddamn annoying, asking me for money, money, nothing but money, and I paid for the money you gave dear Sharon! No way! You've been... oh, Mr. Smith! Allow me, dear. The parents are responsible for their child's failures. No, that's not true, Dad. What isn't true, boy? Shame on you! You're hurting dear Helen, and you're causing dear Sharon discomfort. You're making the other parents furious, and you're actively humiliating us. How much trouble do you have to cause people to feel satisfied, eh? 
Mary, please bring me the money. Twenty grand should be enough. Got it, honey. No, no, wait! I have no intention of taking money from my parents. And yet you think you would take money from dear Sharon, who is in a weaker position! Quifford, if even that isn't enough, come to us for more. You want more, right? More money? No, no, no! What I want is a family! Then why did you take the financial one up? You're using the means of money to win over Sharon, not personality or sincerity, but money! Such a pathetic bastard, you! Someone who is self-centered and inconsiderate, I will divorce them! Oh, oh, wait, Helen, it's still too soon. It wouldn't be too late to decide that when Sharon is going to remarry or not. Are you trying to treat me like insurance? You're becoming more despicable every second, boy. It was my huge mistake for allowing my loving daughter to marry someone like this. I shall also be ashamed for the rest of my life. How could I have actually considered a naivety of yours a little cute? Sharon, let me hear your answer. And of course it's no! How can you freaking propose marriage in this god-awful situation, eh? Is the inside of your head nuts and bolts galore, eh? It's going to be hard being a single mother. Are you still gonna accept that? It's going to be a million times harder to be together with you! If you want to marry me, please come with an annual income of $200,000. Only then will I sit down at the negotiating table. Like a woman like you can pull a relationship with a man of such high class. Know thyself, woman. You, you know, know thyself, motherfucker. Does that mean I need that much money to turn a blind eye to how shitty you are? You're the one raising my required annual income to 200 grand, bitch. W wasting my fatherliness, you little. You mean your dastardliness, bitch? A selfish person? Who doesn't care about others. So self-righteous. Devoid of common sense. And devoid of shame. You patronize yourself and have self-esteem all too high. I'm divorcing such a narcissist who loves himself more than I. Disowning. Please disappear. Here's your lovely money. W what the frick is wrong with all of you? My own damn parents ought to take my side. What the hell? How can you call yourself an adult? Not to mention the fact you ain't my son no more. Are you serious, Dad? This is the bargain! Just like you, Ryan was an important son to us. Dear Sharon was the wife of that precious son of ours. Looking down on dear Sharon is the same as looking down on Ryan. Now hold on. Up until his passing, he wasn't exactly a saint, you know. He didn't go to university. His annual income was lower than mine. Eh? He had no savings, and he didn't have insurance. Up in the clouds. Goddamn bastard! If you'd say anything further, I'll tear your filthy tongue out of there! Ryan has always been much more amazing than you, Clifford. At least he was a nice guy who never said bad things about other people. Are you that proud of being a university graduate, you good two shoes, waitlisted substitute bitch? The difference in annual income is probably around five grand. Anyhow, freaking knew both of your incomes, damn it! Ryan always consulted Sharon before making any big decisions. In comparison, you decide everything by yourself. What you think about that doesn't freaking matter. Me, 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 me. That's exactly what happened this time too. Just rushes ahead, makes assumptions, and ends up becoming a douchebag who gets all of our parents together for this bullshit. That's you in a nutshell. The only reason I was holding back from you is because I was trying to suck it up for your parents' sake. And you turned out to be an idiot who never noticed this and went delulu thinking you were popular. Did you seriously think there was a chance for us? Hell nah! Your likability arteries have all been sucked dry. Is that not enough? Do you seriously want your pulse flatlined, eh? Anyway, thanks to this incident, I've truly understood the fundamental nature, the heart, the soul, and the feelings of you stupid scumbag. Truly understood. Divorce me now with no questions asked. Generally speaking, I despise the idea of a single mother equaling a weak person. I can do anything and everything for my lovely son. I already put my life on the line when I gave birth to him. Don't measure anyone, especially a single mother, with that brain-dead stupid measuring stick of yours. No! Stop! Don't you dare come near me or my son ever again! Or me! You better not go near my daughter! If you do, a heat-seeking, nuisance-seeking missile shall be launched and will initiate a full force field around all of us. Don't come near our house either! Or Ryan's grave. Divorce. Disowned. Divorce. Disowned. Disowned. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I was in the wrong. Please forgive me. If dear Helen allows it. Dear Helen allows it. If Miss Helen allows it. 
If Helen allows it. If Helen allows it. Helen! Hell frickin' nah! Why? Hold up now. You were the one who started screaming that you wanted a divorce, right? I got the forums ready. Hell, I even bought a book on divorce. Oh, oh, but that was if Miss Sharon had accepted me. All aboard, choo-choo, delulu. Bound for the darkest patch of Hell Clifford. Well, you have no choice but to accept it as a result of your own doing. No, I was just a little uh, panicked. You were really pretty damn panicked. But uh, it's all right now, uh, believe me. Enough with the bossing around. How can I believe you? Henceforth, I will never feel my strange sentiments. A life just with you, Helen, is good too. I'll love you forever. I'm serious, I swear. If you're going to take your vows, you already did them once in the chapel. You were the one who made it all for naught. I was confused, uh, panicked, uh, confusion, accidente. I understand you were confused, but that confusion won't go away, will it? It will! A habit of getting confused so that it even causes a disturbance at home and you quickly can fix it? Is there any such data, How? Trust me, believe me. Abandoned by his ex-wife, rejected by his future wife, and disowned by his parents. I don't want to lead a life like that. I was stupid. I shall be reborn. Just one, one chance. Are you seriously reflecting on it? Yes, ma'am. I vow to continue to persevere in our efforts to prosper our descendants, and I'll be sure to conceive another family member. Are you still saying it's my fault? Huh? Well, that's... Uh, that's a fact. If we twist that up, our relationship in the future will be in trouble. Uh, since this is a perfect opportunity, I thought I'd expose my inner self as well. At this freaking stage, you're still thinking preserving your own integrity? You're the one trying to mess up our relationship, bucko. The perfect opportunity. Divorced by your wife, rejected by your brother's wife, and disowned by your parents. And this was the perfect opportunity? Absolutely pathetic. You weren't cut out for marriage. You're seriously not the kind of person who can build close relationships with people. I'm so stunned that I don't feel like getting angry anymore. As of today, you are nothing to us. No, no, no ma'am, please. I'm not blaming Helen, but I would like to raise the issue once again so that a sad incident like this never happens. And, and you're, you're the, the one making it a freaking, freaking problem, problem bitch. bitch! Let's go, Helen. Being in the same room as this prick makes us all crazy. True, it feels like I'm trying to talk to a dolphin. My son has done something truly unacceptable. I'm so sorry. Mary, if you please. This contains 30 grand. This is in lieu of alimony. No, I cannot accept this, Mr. Smith. Mrs. Smith. No, dear. It will hurt your history with marriage, and it would make us so happy if you received the alimony. But that'll make me feel so guilty. Please, dear. We beg you to accept our apology. If you don't mind using it however I like. Of course. This is the money I'm giving you. Understood, sir. Well then... What? Sharon, dear, use this. I can't accept that much money. Whatever the circumstances, I was the cause of your accepting a divorce. I'm not giving it to you, rest assured. Eh? I would like Trevor to use it however he likes. Huh? Oh, um, but... Here, here, my selfless daughter. It shouldn't be too long until you find your next man. Indeed. Indeed. The very thought of betraying someone with such generosity. I know this has nothing to do with anything, people, but I don't think Clifford will ever find happiness again. Agreed. Brian was our only son. That's how it is. Yes. <laughs> no! This kind of ending is impossible! Nothing like what I was thinking! Helen! Sharon! Mr. Smith! Mrs. Smith! Dad! Mom! No one, no one here is on my side! Not, Not a single person on this earth! Being bored was my biggest mistake! <laughs> and that's how I quickly divorced Clifford. He was too dumb, too frivolous, too stupid. I couldn't do it anymore. It wasn't just me who thought that. It was biological parents as well, so only doom would be awaiting him, right? Clifford was kicked out of the house, and because he had no money, he went to a shared house where he showed off his characteristic toxic behavior and became isolated there as well. Humanity had completely lost faith in him and he became unemployed. 
You there. You haven't paid your rent. I'll kick you out if you don't pay it until tomorrow. Looks like he's gonna have to live an even poorer life. On the other hand, I thankfully remarried relatively early on and had a child. It was so simple that I wondered why I could never have conceived a child with Clifford. Oh, she's a girl and her name is Sadie. Even now, I still keep in touch with Henry and Mary Smith and Sharon, and we get along famously. Sharon also has a boyfriend named Aiden, and they're riding the good waves with a warm wind blowing them towards a better tomorrow. Troublebusters.